flowing out of Cape Town, South Africa, a vast network of highways spreads out across the Western Cape province. The N2 is the country's longest tarred road, running the length of South Africa's coast before turning inland to the economic heartland of Gauteng. The N1 is the Cape's busiest road, with stretches carrying up to 150,000 vehicles per day. The R27 traverses the harsh west coast before linking with the N7, which stretches northwards to the desert border with Namibia. Dedicated to keeping these roads safe and traffic flowing are the men and women of the Western Cape Highway Patrol. In this episode, Senior Provincial Inspector Swanepoel has an extremely busy night in Worcester, which could end badly, as he knows all too well. While P.I. Matewana's patience is stretched to the limit, keeping pedestrians safe on the N2. While each inspector experiences an extremely different night shift, both end up at the local police station. In their relentless quest to reduce road crashes and fatalities, the Vusta Provincial Traffic Team conduct frequent vehicle stop and check operations, patrol the streets of Vusta looking for dangerous intoxicated drivers, and risk life and limb monitoring this dark and dangerous stretch of the N1. It's Saturday night in Worcester, and SPI Cameron Swanepoel is on patrol. I know your rugby is playing tonight. There's a rugby playing, so people would go out to the to the bars and have a couple of drinks. And yeah, I think we will just we're just gonna have a look at that also tonight. Meneer, is there any alcohol from the night? No. No alcohol? Okay. No, I don't want to go to work. Oh, okay, cool. I don't want to go to work. Okay. Okay, yeah. But you can rest life. I mean, you can check on something. No, 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 it's okay. All good. You have to take a hand, meneer. Yeah, good, yeah. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Thank you, yourself. Good morning, meneer. So, I'm going to go to the pool. I'm going to go to the pool. Yeah. With the advent of COVID, inspectors can no longer use breathalyzers to test for alcohol and have to rely on more traditional field sobriety tests to decide whether to proceed with an arrest and blood tests. Can you go meneer, alsjeblieft? Hoe staan op een been voor mij, alsjeblieft? Okay, je ziet de lijn niet zo. Okay, thank you. Put your hand, Put in yourself. Okay, stand. Eh? Walk towards me. Yes, one line. <laughs> no, walk normal. Yes. Okay, walk back. No, no, no. Face, face, other way. Can you do that? As SPI Swanepoel patrols the main street, a vehicle recklessly races past in the opposite direction, and he swiftly turns around to give chase. This vehicle is traveling at speeds well in excess of the limit, and when SPI Swanepoel eventually pulls him over, there's ample evidence for him to take matters further. Hello, meneer. Can I come with you, Prat? Is it meneer? Handbrake, 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 handbrake. Come close to me, Samai. Hou ge oprook, hou net ge oprook. Meneer, ik ben hier hoe jij rij. Nee? Dat is de regie. Daar wil ik weten hoeveel alcohol er die gaat vandaag. Um, ik heb vier bier gehad. Oké. Was je één drie slanger komen? Ja, kom goed tot die zomaar. Alsjeblieft, wacht je me gewoon aan. Staan we bij een bingie? Ik denk dat ik zeg maar voor de wijk. Oké. 
Oké, okay, uh, stap je terug, meneer. Zie je wie is daar in de kar bij jou, meneer? Uh, mijn vrouw. Ja. En mijn vrouw is een vriendin, mama. Heet je, heet je je licentie, meneer? Uh, nee, mijn vrouw is een licentie. Maar jij heet, jij heet die, hè? De licentie was te cover, te cover was ze zijn, maar ze gaan met mijn taal, met mijn taal, met mijn taal, met mijn taal, met mijn het meer masker krijgt, alsjeblieft. Dank je. Ik arresteer voor jou, meneer, voor die vermoeden dat hij onder de invloed van alcohol is. Hij heeft recht om stil te blijven. Alles wat je doet of ze kan tien jaar gehouden worden in je hoofd, meneer. Van hier af is je onder mijn arrestatie, meneer. Zo, al, wat, al wat ik vraag, meneer, is geen je samenwerking. Hè? Zodat als je proces of vanaf gaat mondelijk kan doen. Hè? Staan ik over mij op, meneer? Zo kom uit die achterkom, als je een achter vastmaakt, meneer. Nou, kan je hem nog arresteren? Het is om te vinden voor jou. Ik kan je arm maken, arm pakken. Het is om te vinden voor jou. Hé, hallo. Ik denk dat je doet wat ik moet doen. Als het weer. Ik ben. Ik ben. Ik ben. Ik ben. Ik uh, uh, While his colleagues drive the vehicle and passengers safely home, SPI Swanepoel proceeds with the driver to start the booking process, ever aware that the race is on to get the suspect's blood drawn within the two-hour legal limit, or it will not be admissible as evidence in a court of law. Having booked the driver at the local South African police services, they proceed to the provincial hospital to draw blood for analysis. The clock is ticking, but the suspect has nodded off, and SPI Swanepoel has to wake him up for his blood test. With the blood drawn, it's back to the police station where the now compliant suspect will have to spend the night. It's my first time, but then again. Thank you. Thank you so kindly. With the dangerous driver safely behind bars, Cameron now puts his life on the line as he heads out to patrol the treacherous stretch of N1 running north to the Dunes and Toes River. The N2 passing Grabo is notorious for crashes involving pedestrians. The once rural national road is now crowded with low cost and informal housing and many of these residents have little option but to walk or hitchhike along this busy freeway. Having witnessed the carnage of many horrific pedestrian fatalities, P.I. Matiwane is only too aware of these dangers as he psychs himself up for another shift on this treacherous stretch of road. It's painted right here because four years back here, yeah, it was a yellow line all the way up. Then up until we started experiencing a lot of pedestrians, they were like knocked down by cars and stuff like that. Then the department so much decided to paint this uh, place the red line. So meaning which you're not allowed to hitchhike here, you're not allowed to, to stop here. So that's the reason behind that uh, red line painting. So from now, just a visible patrol, up and down, up and down, moving by the ship. Hey, look at that guy. What the? Hey, 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 
Hey, that guy, I think that guy is under the influence. Hey. Zimab, for Imab. I thought to myself, maybe <laughs> it could be under the influence or what. So, but now I just had a chat with him. So he said, no, he was trying to cross to the other side. Then he didn't see that there was a vehicle which was coming through. So, yeah, but then I also spoken to him that whenever you are a pedestrian walking along the road, especially on the N2, this is a national road, you need to be, uh, you need to be vigilant, you need to be careful. And uh, make sure that you always wear some brighter colors that uh, you can be seen at a distance by the motorist. There is some incidents that, like, I once came across. When I get to that particular place where they happened, like, I remember everything, like, it was, like, yesterday. So I remember two years back in uh, Hrabo, I was working six to six shift at night. And we got a call from dispatch that it has been an incident here yeah, on N2, close by to Kromko. As we approach coming up that hill there, we could see there's a lot of cars here standing, some of them with the hazards on at night. As I was coming with the cones, uh, securing the scene and the stuff, putting cones, I could feel like my feet were getting sticky and sticky and sticky. Now, when I shined the torch, checking under my shoes, it was just full of blood. We saw some human pieces here. So we couldn't even distinguish or tell like what kind of a person was he. Up until like, the later stages, we were collecting things, small flesh pieces with the forensic guys. So one of the guys, he saw the, the chin. The bear was gray yeah, on the chin. So that's the only one when we know, yeah, it was an elderly colored male. That old man, he has been uh, hit by a vehicle, not one vehicle. I think it has been a couple of vehicles. And some of them have been driving over him and over and over. I still remember everything as it was that day. As the sun sets, the risks increase exponentially, with pedestrians all but invisible to motorists hurtling along the dark road. Barefoot. Hello. Hello, guys. Evening, how are you? I'm fine. I'm uh, not very fine. I'm halfway fine. Oh, good. What's going on? I was trying to go to Joburg. I was robbed halfway there in Somerset West. Yes. I'm trying to go back to my father, but he lives in Bredarstorp. It's not far from here. You can't say Bredarstorp is not far from here. Yeah, it's kind That's of, far. Kalidon, where are you guys from? We are from, we're in Hrabo now. Eh? We're in Hrabo now. Where is that? <laughs> There's not maybe a shop there. There is BB garage there up front. Yeah, maybe I have a lift, guys. It's so cold here. I'm going mental. Ah. I picked up this thing for the for little heat, and my shoes, they stay rotty. And now I look like a hobo, but I'm not. Do you know your father's or your relative's cell phone number? No, or? my mom's. Ah. But she doesn't stay here, she stays in Joburg. Yo. My father stays in, in Berdasdor, but I don't have his number. Yeah. Oh. So I just phone my mom and she can phone you. That's fine, I'll just give you a lift and drop you off there by Pipi Karaj. Yeah, and then we can phone on the road or over there. I'll give you a mask, brother, ne? I have one. You have one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Are you throwing your towel away now? No, it's not a towel, it's a sail. It's a sail? Yeah, it's a sail. Okay, let's sanitize, brother, both hands, oh, yeah. Okay, then you can... Wait, let's see. Yeah, I'm not good. Before I can put you into my office. Okay, it's fine, you can jump in. Yeah. Now, this thing of hitchhiking, garage to garage, it's not safe, brother. So will you be fine yet, baby garage? Yeah. P.I. Matiwane plans to drop the underdressed and unprepared hitchhiker at the local garage after notifying his parents. It's going through me. Hello, Ma. But it's not destined to be that simple. Where is it? Is it? Is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay, do my friends, ne? Do my friends. Um, I was going to speed cops. I was now on the road. I was cold foot. I was being robbed. I was cold foot and a cord broke. I got a pass card. I got the gold. Okay, wait, wait, listen. Okay, so, so, okay. so, so, so. Hello, ma'am. Evening. How are you? Stefan's mother doesn't seem very happy to hear from him, so Timbani takes over. From Kalidon. Yeah, so I, g I gave your son a lift. I picked him up on the N2. He was walking from Hrabo yeah. on his way to Predar stop. She seems annoyed that he's been robbed again, but agrees to get his father to call. OK, 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 thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. I appreciate it a it's lot. It's OK. Then I'll keep on making tents, maybe in a couple of hours or four hours later to see whether you're still here or what. Sure. OK, sharp, brother. Yeah, it's rough here. Maybe later on during the night, if he's still here, I'll just pick him up and drop him at the police station in Hrabo. 
Whereby you will be safe, yeah. Jezus, yes, son. Hallo, pa. Ja, hoor eens, als je een grap bouwt, nee, bij die pipi garage, hij is kalfvoet, ik weet niet, schoenen in je f***ing kei koud, ik wil niet, weet niet, oh, nou. Once again, the conversation is not going well, and P.I. Matiwane has to take over. Okay, let me talk to him. Like now, what must you do with your son? Are you going to come pick him up or...? Stefan's father will only be able to pick him up in the morning, so Timbani makes a plan. So, I'll just drop him off at the, at the police station. Okay. Like, how did you left home? I had, I had a lift in Tonkali then, and I mm. slept there for one night in the toilet by the, by the mall. Hello? Oh. OK, let me give my phone. Your father came. Hello? Having gotten involved, Hello? Provincial Hello? Inspector Matiwane now uh, feels responsible for Stefan's safety. But as the calls keep coming and plans keep changing, he's starting to regret his good deed. So what is he saying? Uh, Wow. Okay. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Hi. 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 For me now is to just drop you at the police station. Yeah. Yeah, place that will be the safest and the warmest place for you now. Hello, Captain. Kujan. Because now I'm going to go to the police station. 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 Once again, the best laid plans are thwarted. Uh, this time by COVID regulations. Inside. Yes. Uh, Mr. Stefan. Come, brother. Uh, listen, we're in Krabo police station now. Yeah. So I've just uh, spoken to the captain. Yeah. So she says, uh, they can't let you sleep inside here, yeah, due yeah. to the COVID regulations and the stuff. Yeah. So they're not allowed to keep someone here yeah, yeah, inside yeah, the premises. Yeah, yeah. So what they will do, they will organize a halfway meet with the other station in Caledon, you see. Okay. So maybe they will put you in the van, take you up until I hope pass you by, they will meet with the Caledon police officers. The Caledon officers will take you to Caledon. Then when you get to Kalidon, they will organize halfway again with the Napir officers, they understand? So they will meet halfway and so on and so forth up until you get to Pratara. So as long as you have your, your, your father's number. Yeah. While P.I. Matiwane and the South African police services okay, get come, Stefan come. safely home, Cameron is on the N1 praying that he too will make it home in one piece. Uh, we're going to move out from Booster towards Toes River and then we'll just monitor the traffic flow. Weekends are generally busy here because of Booster being a pass-through town to all these places like Johannesburg and even a lot of people from Cape Town uses this road to drive towards the N2. So yesterday we had a major accident. Um, it was between a truck and a, and, a, and a taxi actually. Apparently the taxi overtook on a double barrier line and then he collided into that truck. So when I got there, I saw two bodies that's laying there and one arm. The N1 from the Duans to the Western Cape provincial border has claimed 885 lives since 2010 and needs constant monitoring. But keeping commuters alive on this stretch of road is in itself a risky business. This car behind me just came over the double barrier line. Ma'am, you were driving behind me, right? And you overtook on a double barrier line. I was watching you while you were driving behind me. Ma'am, I am going to give you a fine, yeah? Thank you, no? Police officer, are you off duty or but... The offending driver is an off-duty South African Police Service member, but SPI Swanapool applies the law without fear or favor. Uh, it's prescribed fines, no? If you're behind vehicles driving like this, you can pick up on violations very easily. So. See, here's a barrier line at the back. You see, he's coming here, he's coming, he's coming. He's coming. You see, another vehicle that overtook us on the barrier line. Please, please. The roads are very busy. 
you can't still take that chance to overtake on the double barrier line like that. Are you driving to Queenstown? Please, please, I want you to get safe then. With the memory of yesterday's fatal taxi crash fresh in mind, Cameron is extremely aware of the horrific consequences of dangerous overtaking and is doing his utmost to alter driver behavior and keep the road safe. Please, sir, if you are tired, stop and take a rest. Yes, so I'm just going to talk to this driver about his lights because he's dead here in the back. But it's nice that he's moving into a truck stop here now, so I can just give him an instruction that he should stay here. Because you can just imagine that if you're driving the pace of 100 or 120, and if you suddenly have to apply brake for a truck that's in front of you without lights. The trailer light is dead. There's no real lights. Okay. I check the cap right now. Nothing is really they stole it. They stole it. Ah, they stole it there where I was parked, man. There's no way you can drive to nighttime. Yeah. So you have to sleep now. You have to sleep. You're okay, safe for everyone. Yes, I know I'll do that. Okay, go now, Thank sir. you very much, guys. Back on patrol, SPI Swanapool soon pulls over a taxi for dangerous overtaking on a barrier line. This taxi is en route to a funeral with the deceased in the trailer. Hello, guys. Driver. Hey, come Driver. Driver. Ask them. I'm going to talk man. Come, take it. Come, take it. As a beef. No, no, no. Come, come. I'm going to talk to you. Many Cape Town residents still have strong links with rural Eastern Cape and return there to bury their dead. The overnight journey from Cape Town to the Eastern Cape takes 10 to 12 hours, and taxis usually return with the mourners the following night making driver fatigue a serious concern. SPI Swanepoel's priority is to ensure that this taxi doesn't become a coffin for the mourners. As another stressful night shift on the N1 comes to an end, Cameron is relieved to be back home in one piece. Next episode, SPI Valentino Ardenser has his hands full keeping the peace after a crash. While on the N2, Provincial Inspector Hopper and colleagues deal with a stream of intoxicated drivers at the end of a long weekend. <laughs> and the next generation of inspectors are put through their paces as they prepare to hit the streets. Complete out of the road and then bring it safe back to the road. Please, let's get safe.